What is it exactly that makes Lance a champion? A better body? He wound up being the youngest world champion on the road ever at the age of 21. One of Lance's advantages is he started training hard and long, very young. He became a very good triathlete uh, in his early teen years. There's almost certainly a genetic component that he had the capability of developing a heart that has a above average large volume and has the muscular strength and the capability to empty that heart chamber with each beat. What is it about Lance's heart that makes Lance better than anyone else? Lance's heart can pump an astonishing nine gallons of blood per minute at its maximum output, while the average heart can only pump five. During that same minute, his heart will beat over 200 times. That makes it a third more effective than an average man's. If you put him in a ring with someone else, he'd be the last guy standing. So when Lance got cancer and he came back from that, he rebuilt his body 20 pounds lighter with the same power as a cyclist. So what he did was he, he, you took a guy who was a world professional champion and had won stages in the tour, and you improved his power to weight ratio by 10%. Usually, you know, races are won by a half a percent, by 1%. To have a 10% improvement is just so astronomical that you can't imagine. Lance began to pay particular attention to his own physiology, using a battery of very specific tests to improve his performance. Metabolic profiling with lactate testing is used to assess the capability of probably 80, maybe even higher percent of the elite pro cyclists now. It's three different measures of his performance capability. Heart rate, lactate, oxygen uptake. All of them critical to performance. All of them things that uh, there would be a lot of focus on Lance tra Lance's training program. Monitoring performance is all about increasing power output. Everyone has limits of performance, but knowing and training around those limits allows an elite athlete like Lance to generate the maximum amount of power in the heat of battle. A key benchmark for measuring lung efficiency is the VO2 max test. VO2 max is your best measure of aerobic capacity, your ability to do work. This is a set of one-way valves, so all the air comes in this side, goes into his lungs, and then out this side. So we capture all the expired air on this side. And then in the device, we're measuring six critical variables in that air. But most importantly, we're measuring the difference in the oxygen content of the air that comes in this side and what comes out that side. For every breath Lance pulls into his lungs, he extracts far more oxygen than the average person. An impressive 83 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight and he generates over 500 watts of power at his peak performance. In contrast, the average healthy 20-year-old extracts a mere 45 milliliters of oxygen and generates only 250 watts of power. In other words, we all take in the same breath. Lance just uses his twice as efficiently. When we did his metabolic capacity and I could see the amount of power that he could put out um, in watts, and his oxygen uptake, those were exceptional. They were among the very highest that we had tested. So Jim, we're gonna start you at 125 watts here for four minutes, all right? At increasing levels of intensity, like those that occur during a climb in the Pyrenees, muscles create lactic acid, which accounts for the punishing burn associated with great levels of exertion. At the end of this four minutes, I'm going to do a blood draw, just a little bit off the tip of your finger, um, and I'm going to test that for lactate. As the test goes on, we'll start to see that lactate just build up in his blood. And at some point, for any athlete, whether a beginner or Lance Armstrong, that lactate will build up to the point where it forces the body to stop, just simply can't go on any farther. Can you do another stage, Jim? Okay, we're okay. going to take you through. Hang on. This is like the end of an endless climb. Nice, Jim. All right. Nice. Very good. Very good. For reasons unknown to science, Lance's muscles produce less lactic acid than everyone else's. What's more, his body eliminates that lactic acid more efficiently. 
These two unique advantages mean that when he exceeds his aerobic capacity during periods of intense power output, like on a sprint to the finish, Lance maintains full power longer than his rivals. So what were Lance's other advantages? The toughest battles of the Tour de France take place where the air is thinnest. So to increase his oxygen carrying capacity, Lance would train and recover at altitude. And Lance doesn't appear to have much of a drop in his oxygen uptake capability as he climbs higher and higher and higher. If you think in something like the Tour, there are many very decisive stages that are contested at those elevations of 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 meters. And if he doesn't lose that metabolic capability, that certainly would contribute significantly to uh, being able to be successful. When there's less oxygen available to the lungs, the body creates more red blood cells. More red blood cells increase a rider's ability to use oxygen, bringing more of it into his system when he needs it most.